Hi everybody, it's Dr. Dan again. In the last video, we had our blood vessel model ready for flow simulation. So that's what we're going to do in this, this video. We're going to go ahead and use SolidWorks to run FlowSim and see what happens inside the vessel. And the way you would do that, so I have FlowSim loaded on my mine right now, but if you need to do it, you can go to add-ins and it lists all the things you can add in. And you just want to make sure you check this SolidWorks flow sim and hit OK. And it'll eventually load and show up on uh, this little dashboard area here. So if I click flow sim and I click wizard, that says, it obviously wants me to save it. You know, I really should have been saving this document the whole way. So I'm going to say save as, why not? Part 7 is what we use. So I'll use the wizard to do a flow sim because that's the easiest. Um, it doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. And we're going to basically work through all these things. Okay, we want to use SI units. Um, a lot of these you don't really have to mess with. Okay, we want to do internal sim. Okay, uh, we could include all these extra things. We're not going to include it for our blood vessel sim. We can choose the fluid we want. Um, fortunately, we can choose non-Newtonian fluid and add blood so we can use blood you'll see that it automatically says laminar flow type only because that's all we're going to see anyway okay we could set you know i gave you some uh conditions for roughness some slip conditions you can use slip condition for blood with the yield stress i gave you you can also set this is where you'd set like the the pressure and temperature i'm just going to leave them right now but you should probably be setting these to what the sim should be Okay, and it's happy with this. Uh, usually this is where it would tell you your lids aren't on right or the thing's not airtight or something. Um, but And it'll try to tell you to use the loads tool. But if you did how I showed you, it works pretty well uh, to make lids. Um, and you can use those um, to enclose the flow sim. So now we're almost done. Uh, you can see the big box is the computational domain. You know, frankly, I don't need to see it, so I'm just going to hide it. Uh, it has some fluid subdomains we don't need to worry about. What we need to worry about is boundary conditions. And so I want to insert a boundary condition. And so on the boundary condition we're going to give is we're going to give inlet mass flow rate, because that's what I gave you, and then we're going to give outlet pressures. Okay, so basically that's how a hose or a tube works. You're, you think about the boundary, which at one boundary I'm throwing stuff in. At the other boundary, how much stuff comes out depends on how much back pressure there is. And so I'll just start with inlet mass flow. Um, we have to select where it is, and this is where it gets a little confusing. You want to make sure you select the inner surface of that thing. So sometimes you have to click on this, and then, see it says face one, but that's actually the out, outside face. So I'm going to right click and say select other. And then you, it's usually just the first one down that's the inside face. And so now it thinks I have both faces selected, so i got to delete the other one. So now you can tell I just have that interface selected. Okay, so we're going to provide mass flow from that interface. Um, you could give it all kinds of different things. Um, I'll just give it whatever. That's like 10 grams a second. Good enough. And it draws nice arrows that say, okay, you're having mass flow in there. The other thing we're going to do, as I said, we're going to do uh, pressure as our boundary condition at the exits. If you had different pressures at each exit, you could add different boundary conditions at each. I'm just going to use the same, so I can say insert boundary condition, and we can select multiple ones of these. So I'm going to do the, have to do the same thing where I know I'm going to have to probably, I'm going to zoom in so I can see what's going on, but right click on this and say select other, and make sure it's the interface that's selected. Okay, which it appears not to be. Hold on. That appears to be the outer face. I'm going to try that again. And that appears to be the outside edge. So see, some of this is not the easiest thing in the world to, to grab.
Uh-oh, I zoomed around too fast. Okay, now it looks like I have that interface selected. I'm going to do the same thing on these. Select other. Yes, that's the inner. And that's the inner side. Okay, so we have those three selected. Instead of a flow rate, as I said, we're going to choose a pressure. So that's where we choose a pressure opening. And really, you can choose any of these. Uh, I'll just set the static pressure, and you could set the static pressure and temperature what it should be. Hit OK, and it does those double arrows to indicate that those two are pressure goals. And so now we have our boundary condition set up. You could also set up goals. I, there, I, you don't need to set up goals. It's just a way of monitoring certain conditions as the simulation progresses. And you can look up those numbers later. Um, if, you want, if you want, you can do that. I, I generally don't do it, uh, just to keep things less complicated. And so now we're ready to run. I can hit Run. I want to definitely solve a new calculation. Um, I would always recommend doing a new calculation and not continuing a calculation. And SolidWorks does its thing prepares a model, does, does the, builds the mesh um, for the simulation, and then does the calculations. I skipped ahead a little bit, but you can see it ran. It solved after 46 iterations. It says everything's converged, so that's good. We can close this window. Of course, we don't see anything yet because we need to look at the results. And so this is where you get into looking at all the different results. Usually the thing you want to see is like your flow trajectories first. So we can go ahead and do that, insert flow trajectories. Uh, starting points, we want to start at the the same place where our mass load starts. So again, I'll hit select other and make sure I get that inside face. You can give number of points, I'll say 100. Um, you can give them appearance to make them look however you want. I'm not going to use pressure, I'll use velocity as the coloring scheme. Um, and that's usually good enough to get things going. Okay, and then it draws our flow trajectories, and you can see what happened to the fluid uh, in this case. So pretty interesting. It usually auto scales these to the max and min to get the colors. Uh, depending on what you're doing, you'll probably have to change the scale to get things working and be able to compare different geometries to each other. Now this is where I would go back and hide the uh, lid. So you can go back to this and on each of these you can say hide the lids. That way things look a little better now. Okay, and so you can, I mean, it's a starting place for analyzing your data. Get back to FlowSim. You know, usually sometimes you want to go ahead and hit play to look at it and watch it flow. It's kind of cool. But then you'll use some of the strategies we're going to talk about in class to analyze the flow sim. How are you going to analyze the data? How are you going to compare one blood vessel to another? What are the important things to think about? And so don't just do everything that you can do just because you can. Think about what's really important to show and then why you're showing it. Um, and then you can set up your nice looking visuals.